Harvestone, Whip It, Pile Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. There is no sun, but if there was, I'd imagine it would be over the yard arm. But it doesn't matter, because this is quite a light ABV pale ale. In fact, it's very low. It's 2.3%. So, I could even be at work now and still drink this stuff, which is always a bonus. It makes the day a little bit more interesting. Anyway, enough about that. This is the... Whip It Pale Ale from Harveston Brewery, or the Harveston Brewery. They're based in Scotland, in a place called Alloa, or in a region called Alloa. If you've heard of that before, that of course is where the Williams Brothers Brewery is based. And I don't know what the exact distance is, but it really can't be that far because the Alloa isn't a massive place. It's sort of north of Edinburgh and Glasgow. If you imagine like a triangle, You've got Glasgow there, Edinburgh there, and Alloa is up there. Not too far from uh, Bannockburn. Ask a Scotsman about Bannockburn and they won't shut up for the rest of the night. Anyway, enough about that. Yeah, this is a, what they've called a, a pale ale. But 2.3, you could almost be forgiven for thinking it was a light ale, I think anyway. But it's quite a modern one from what they're sort of touting, it's got citrus, it says it's refreshing and it's spicy as well. Now I tried their fourth lager, their fourth craft lager the other night, and it was super spicy. And they omitted, or didn't omit, but they didn't put much emphasis on the, on the malt on that, which was really disappointing because if they had, that would have been a fantastic beer. But it was just all earth and spice. And sadly, the malts were overlooked. But I'm hoping that it's not the case with this. So, let's investigate this beer. Right, it's a 330ml can, and as I said, it's 2.3%. But it's got some interesting hops in this, which can leave me guessing a little bit. They've used Fuggles in there, which of course is a British hop and it's renowned for its earthiness, but there's also a slight fruit on that as well. And it's used in quite a lot of the traditional British ales, the bitters especially, and you know the darker ruby ales as well. This has got cascade hops in it. Now this could be, as I said before, with, you know, where I'm reading these hops out, there's always variation in them. In the country they were grown, but also on the alpha acid content. Now, these Cascade hops, they sound American. They could have them American flavors if the alpha acid content was high. But if it's quite low, then Cascade hops resemble one of the German noble hops, which I'm assuming this does. If they're saying it's spicy, it could be that. But they're also saying it's citrusy, so it could be that. So I really don't know. And as I always say when I'm reading out these hop descriptions, they're just a guideline. The yeast can make or break the beer and it will give it its own unique flavor and twist, regard, regardless of what the, the hops are. You know, you can have, as I said, you know, you can have the exact amount of, of the same hops, use two different strains of yeast and get a completely different flavor. But just going back to the yeast, there's two mores they've used in this. They've used Magnum, which is usually renowned as a very good bittering hop due to its high alpha acid content. But they've also used Simcoe as well. Now that can be used for bittering too. But if it's got the high alpha acid content, or sorry, no, if it's got a lower alpha acid content, then it will contain earthy notes. You'll get some pine, you'll get some citrus, like passion fruit on it as well. 
So it's quite an interesting mix of hops they've got there. And they've also put oats in there as well. Now you do get oats in quite a lot of these low ABV beers and also in stouts as well. Oats will improve the mouthfeel. They give it a very, very slightly oaty flavour, but usually oats are added for the mouthfeel. They give it a nice creamy mouthfeel. So with all that in mind, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Hopefully, I'll be able to ascertain what sort of pale ale we've got here, just from sniffing it. Hmm, interesting. I'm definitely getting them pine notes. They're there, but they're very faint. And there's earthy notes to it too. So it's bordering on like a British style pale ale, but there is little touches of citrus there. The pine there as well is quite, it's quite big too. Let's get it into the glass. Maybe I'll get some more out of it in the glass. That's what it looks like. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that was a lager, but it's, it's a very, very light amber colour. Golden amber colour. What are we getting on the nose? Mm. Not a lot. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, there's, there's earth and citrus. And some pine on it too. There's a little touch of pine that's been sort of running all the way through that. Interesting. Let's get the rest of it in there and give it a blast. Here it is, all in the glass. Fairly light carbonation on that. You can see that. Head dissipating, it's half finger, white foamy head. Wow, more earth on that now. Mm. Anyway, let's get this down the hatch. Bottoms up. Mmm. Yep. That is very British. That is a very British pale ale, in my opinion. Quite nice too. The malt is quite quite strong in this, even though I wasn't getting any malty aromas from it at all. It is there. Some light pine and some citrusy fruit-like. What would that be? Mmm, grapefruit I'm getting, but it's, it's very faint. It's very, very subtle. The pine is there, but again, that's subtle. But I'll tell you one thing, it certainly tastes like the ABV is higher on this. I wouldn't have expected this to be 2.3. quite nice and you can get that that big body on it from the oats mmm that is quite nice actually as pale ales go as British pale ales go that is really nice now you could mix that I think with with a lager and that give you a nice light and lager or even a bitter even though it's a pale ale and not a light ale with that ABV and the taste on it as well it's reminded me a little bit of a light ale, very malty. And of course, what you do find with light ale when you add it to lagers and bitters, it really brings the malt out on it. And now you've got a fair bit of malt on this, so I imagine if you added that to a, a reasonably good bitter, you'd get an amazing, bit, amazing pint. There is a distinct, what I'm getting now, there is a distinct creamy 
almost butterscotch like flavour to it. Not that horrible dodgy butterscotch that you get from diacetol. This is a much creamier, some people don't like that. I actually don't mind it, I think it's quite nice, but some people really don't like that. But I think there may, I don't think it's diacetol, I think there is just a very slight butterscotch, but it gives it a nice twist for me, I think. Mmm, that's really nice, and of course, with the ABV being so low, you know, you can drink that quite happily, I mean, it's almost a low alcohol beer with that. Um, certainly got its place, you know, if you're driving, but you, you know, you just wanted the taste of a beer, and you know, you had that super cold, that would be quite refreshing. What's it saying aside of it? Whippets are known for their bursts of energy, as well as their gentle, na gentle nature. Fuck me, you try telling a rabbit that it's getting chased by them. Similarly, this pale ale is bursting with aromas of spice and citrus fruit with a gentle, subtle complexity. Yeah, it has. I will give it that. All thanks to the agile thinking of our master brewers. Yeah, I think they got the, the hop choice quite right there and the balance is quite, quite good. Very nice, very nice indeed. So what's the verdict on this? Yeah, I quite like it. It's got a lot of flavor for a very low ABV beer. There's plenty of hoppiness to it, but when I say hoppiness, I mean subtle citrus, but big earth and a touch of spice on it as well. So the hops, you know, they are there, but when you see pale ale, that's not an American pale ale. This is a British style pale ale more subtle in its flavour, but more balanced from what I'm getting. And the malts are quite nice on this. There is that butterscotch, slight butterscotch flavour that I'm getting that's running through that, and I quite like that. So all in all, this is not a bad beer at all. I would give that, I'd give it an eight out of 10, all things considered. It's pretty good. It's, I think, just under, just under two pounds. Now, you know, you can deliberate when you, whether you want to pay two, can, two pound for a can of 2.3, 330 mil pale ale. That's entirely up to you. Um, I'm not sure I would. Well, I'm not sure I would. I already have. But I'm not sure I would do it again. But there may be situations where, you know, you want a low ABV beer and you just want to drink something that's not going to get you two out of your nut and this would be perfect it's full of flavor so yeah i'd give that i'll give it an eight out of ten and i recommend it but only in certain situations but yeah not bad from harveston another good one from them i do like this brewery they've only let me down once with that lager but everything else has been pretty good from what i've from what i've tasted and remember Beer is working class champagne.